this is the part we've all been looking forward to. This is what we've been building up to, is being able to define uh, our strategy. And that is going to be based around looking at uh, action and location advantages on the arena floor. This is what really makes a difference between robots that perform well and robots that are constantly trying to be relevant on the field. Uh, so the first thing we want to uh, figure out is uh, what can you do? Uh, so uh, that goes back to the, the scoring points analysis we did at the very beginning. Now, where can you do it from? Uh, and more importantly, why that location? Uh, are there any chokeholds to leverage? Are there anything, any places you can be uh, or any actions you can take that are going to upset the game balance that will make it very easy for your alliance to win and very hard for the other alliance to stop you? Uh, those are hard to find, uh, even harder as time goes on. Uh, first doesn't like that to happen, but uh, there's always a possibility that you can find one. And uh, in this process, you want to keep in mind that nothing's impossible. Uh, just because you can't think of a way to do X on the first go-around with the uh, first five minutes of brainstorming doesn't mean that X is impossible. It just means that that idea won't be able to do it. And also, uh, we want to consider that defense is an action. So your alliance is going to be trying to get as many points on the board as possible and the opposing alliance is going to be trying to stop that. They will be defending against that. Uh, but that is an action and that can uh, play into potential penalties where they can be giving you points, for example. And uh, what we really want to identify are are there any hills to be king of in the arena where they're inherently defensible. Uh, versus being out in the open and having no particular advantage. So, let's dive into that. We'll go back to the analysis spreadsheet here, and now we're on the uh, rightmost tab of the action advantages. And again, we're going to want to go through this uh, column by column. We're going to want to identify the different actions, and then uh, where those actions can be taken from. So in this example, uh, again, this is a couple years ago, uh, there was a high goal uh, at, at the tower, which was really um, a very specific thing. Um, you had a goal shot from uh, anywhere on the field. And we're, we're going to ignore anywhere on the field. We're really wanting this to focus on uh, spots that have a uh, particular quality to them. So in this example, there was a feeder station in that game that you could do a goal shot from. Uh, there was uh, the ability to do the goal shot from the far wall, which was synonymous with next to the, uh, the target. Uh, and then, that's interesting, we should have mentioned in here the goal shot from the tower. Maybe that's in here. But So then you've got the frisbee load. Uh, where are you going to pick up the game pieces? So obviously you're going to pick up the game pieces, right? Um, there's the feeder station, which uh, a lot of teams are going to focus on. There's the open field, which is everywhere. Uh, and in, in this example, there is uh, nothing prohibiting the game pieces from being under the pyramid. And so what uh, advantages or disadvantages are there uh, of that? So you want to just look through, build that list of all these possibilities, uh, and then dive into the rule considerations the physical advantages, and the compromises. So physical advantages are especially important because uh, if there's something that is stationary that cannot be moved, you might be able to use that for alignment. And uh, the rules consideration, that's not always going to be true. So Rules are applied to the game by the eyesight, by the uh, observation of the referees. The referees have a lot to do. So they don't always call everything. They don't see everything. And so you might be in the right. Your robot might have been violated by another uh, robot, uh, and they should be, uh, there should be a penalty assigned. But if the referee doesn't see it, 
that doesn't happen. So you really want to focus on the physical advantages because that's going to be in play whether someone sees it or not. Um, so you want to go through that and uh, uh, and then the other thing is the compromises. So uh, in this example, the uh, the tower, if, if you shoot from the tower, then you're not near your feeder stations, for example. Uh, so it's going to take you longer to go and get the frisbees. You're going to be a closer shot. You're going to have a physical alignment to it. Um, there was a real great rule of consideration that uh, an opposing robot would be very careful not to contact your robot because if they did that, they'd get a penalty. So uh, those are the things that you want to just bring those up, discuss them, and then uh, get them written down into this sheet. Again, we're, we're really more exploring it rather than fully committing to anything yet. So you'll go through this whole process with all of the actions, etc. Now's the really fun part. Here's where your team has to decide what are we going to do. So uh, I would suggest hiding or deleting this column and then adding it after you've already filled out all of the rest and had the discussion that is necessary to do so. Because what you want to do is on a scale of one to three, uh, specify uh, what you really want to do being a three what you really don't want to do being a one, and two being probably going to have to do it, but not a huge priority. So uh, we organized this by uh, category. So there was the shooting, there was the loading, and then in this case there was the climbing. All right, and then also at the end, uh, defense. If if your robot, if you really don't achieve things or you're in a pinch, uh, you're playing the defense robot where you're not gaining points? Um, is there something that uh, is going to be optimal to build into your robot's design to make defense better? So uh, that's where that comes into play. So um, we really emphasized um, getting the, the goal shot done, which of course requires the frisbee load. So anyway, um, it was easiest to go through and assign the ones to this first. So uh, things you, you don't there are not optimal. All right, so this is a little bit dicey because you're trying to be uh, abstract and not say our robot, but what would be best for any robot to be doing, and then deciding uh, what you're really wanting for your robot to do. And so this column, even though it's a nice uh, and uh, short column. It, this is where it really comes down to because then you're going to know exactly what actions your robot is going to need to have. Uh, so that's identifying your advant location advantages and from that you can then decide what your robot qualities and functionalities will be.